This is a walkthrough of a fallen leaf or feather animation using Adobe Animate. I'm first starting with a leaf that's uh, in a symbol. So if I double click that leaf in my scene, I see that I have just two layers and one is sort of the background, the green background, and the other is, uh, is the stems in the middle. And I'll get a little closer to this so you can kind of see what that looks like. And I just used a variety of tools to create that. I started with a shape and uh, you can see it's a very simplified shape. And then I used this uh, fluid brush, which is new in uh, Animate 2020, to create the stems and then refined it. I actually went to Modify and Shape and did an Optimize uh, after I did the paint and then cleaned up some of the points. So uh, made it look pretty nice, fairly simple, very um, graphic design kind of. Uh, and then made put that all in a symbol. So I'm going to zoom back out. And so the reason I did that is twofold. One, I am going to create this using a motion tween. I'm going to show a neat little technique where you can apply a motion path to it and uh, animate that uh, on a path, on a drawn path, uh, which is kind of nice to draw out your path and then uh, create the animation. And the second step I'm going to do later is I'm going to take this this leaf and I'm going to do some shape tweening in the symbol. So it has to be a symbol to be a motion tween, but uh, since I want to do some of this motion tweening or some of the shape tweening later, it's great to have it in a symbol and I can kind of create that animation separately. So the first thing I'm going to do after creating that is I'm going to use the pencil tool just because uh, it's going to give me a nice uh, good line. And I already created a uh, a whole layer here for this path. I have a background. I'm going to be putting a background on this and I can kind of move that down and the fallen leaf is here. I already set up a bit of a motion tween, but I just have a starting key. I don't have a um, an end key yet. So it's, re it's ready to set up or it's set up to be animated, um, but I don't want to start moving it yet. So what I'm going to do with this pencil tool is I'm going to start to draw out a bit of a path. And I'm just going to kind of do some sort of loopity loops a little bit to kind of get the path of this feather kind of down. And if I want, I can modify that uh, with a variety of tools and I can kind of delete points if I want. And I like to kind of clean these things up. Don't worry about if uh, this is crossing. And I'll show you why when we get to, down to that stage. But I like to have as few points as possible when I create my animation or when I create my path and give it a nice, you know, I can kind of keep that at a corner if I want or I can kind of move that out. Uh, I can kind of create that path how, however I want. I'd already created a path for this uh, falling feather. I also think that right now the feather is kind of large for my for the path that I wanted to take, but that's okay. I'll make that work out. So I already created this path and I'm going to go to that. I have a different scene set up where I already kind of drew out a path. This is just the same path, but very cleaned up and I sort of refined it a bit. So uh, the next step is once you've created that path, I can modify it. I can kind of clean it up if I want to. It's just a, a it's just a stroke. It's just a line uh, using a, any kind of line tool that you want to. I just used a pencil to get it and you kind of refine it and get the motion going the way you want or get the path going the way you want. And then what you do is you've got this leaf uh, or a feather, whatever it is that's falling. Uh, I have a start point and an end point. I just really did a basic animation. I have it at the very beginning, uh, kind of where it started at. That was uh, my first keyframe. And then I just sort of went, went to the end. Actually, I moved it to the very beginning, sorry. Uh, when you go here to the beginning, you see that I moved it to the start of the path, which is where you really want. You want it to be at the top. And then the end of this is just sort of somewhere, just so I can have a separate keyframe. And all I did is I moved it up here, and then moved it down, went to the very end and moved it, and it created a keyframe automatically. But I'm going to end up replacing all this anyway, so it doesn't really matter where it's going. I just need some sort of path to select. So the technique for this is I'm going to replace that path with this one. So I'm going to double click the line with the selection tool. And then I'm just going to copy command C, or you can go to edit and copy. And it does the same thing. 
And then I'm going to select my leaf or feather or what it is, whatever it is you're animating, and you're going to find that path, right? You're going to see that path right there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in place. I can just go to edit and paste, uh, paste in center is what it says. It's just the command V or control V, depending on uh, your platform. And what it's doing is it's adding, it takes that path and it makes that the path the animation is going to follow. So if you follow the leaf now, it just follows that path. Now you can't edit this anymore. It's kind of done. It did its job. All I wanted to do is kind of get an idea of what path I wanted to go. And then I'm going to modify this animation. You can see it added keyframes down here and what it wanted to do. So here it is at the start. Here it is at the end. It got rid of the previous path that I created in my animation or from my animation on the leaf. And now it is following that path. I can get rid of this path or whatever. I can actually reapply it if I wanted to. I can kind of go through and figure out, do I want to change it? But now that I have keyframes on this, I can just modify these keyframes because I want to kind of add some slow in and slow out to this. So I could just start adding some of these points. It, it probably already has this, but one of the problems you'll notice is not, these are just what are called roving keyframes, right? They are not keyframes that are on the frame span or the tween span. You'll notice that there's one at the start, one at the end, and nothing in between. So I need to change them to roving keyframes. And what I can do is do that from the frame span. I'm going to just move the timeline up here so you can see this a little bit better. And I'll move this over a little bit. And if I right click in the frame span, I can go down to motion path and I can see where it says switch keyframes to non roving. And what that does is it places all the keyframes up into the frame span. So I'm going to dock this back down here. So with them as keyframes now, I can modify their timing. I can select them and move them around to change the timing. I can also go down here and I can adjust my slow in and slow out, or I can even take out points. I can select a point and delete it, but I can also kind of come up here and see what's happening. So right up in here, maybe at the very start, let's say at the very start, I want to rotate it a little bit. So if I move this around at all, it's going to automatically key that rotation. So let's say I come down into here and I want it to kind of flatten out a little bit. And then it gets up to this point. And then I can rotate it a little bit more. And I can kind of keep going through and changing up my animation. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's go to about 100% so I can kind of see this a little bit right in here. So that way I can kind of get a little bit of motion, a little bit of rotation in this 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 leaf that I have uh, falling here. And then I can drag up my handles to kind of add a little bit of slow in, slow out to it. And here I probably want it to kind of speed up a little because it's kind of in between. And I'm just using the exist or the keyframes that came with that motion path to help me out a little bit. All right. So I probably want it to speed up a little bit there. And here I want it to slow down. So I want to kind of lock those in. I'll move this out of my way and play this through a little bit. So it's probably going pretty fast. It's 30 frames per second. So I can stretch this out a little bit longer. I can kind of delay what's going on. This one, I'd probably want it to kind of go slow at the very start and then kind of speed up and slow down as it goes through. Right. So it's got a little bit of speed change there. It's probably going a little too fast. So I can adjust this as we move down. And then I, again, though the X is moving left to right. So it's the speed at which this is going left to right. It'll start out slow. It'll pick up speed. It'll get to this point and it'll slow down again. If I want it to really slow down, I would just kind of drop that down. Now it's also speeding up as it comes into here. So it's got to come to this point. I want it to come over here and I want it to kind of slow down again. And it's kind of curling back on itself. So I'd want to kind of grab these keyframes too and sort of flatten those out. Now I've got a lot going on here, so I could either space that out. I can either select these and kind of move them around to get a little bit more spacing. But right there, I probably want it to go, you know, relatively uh, fast. 
and here maybe relatively fast. Right? So it's not, this is the Y, so it's going up. I don't need it to go up any faster. But right here, right? I don't want it to kind of do all this stuff. So I might just take these out because I feel like these could just really get in my way. So I can take those out and I can kind of set this because this is about the point where I want it to kind of slow down and then it kind of falls back down again. So I'm just kind of using, I use that motion path or that path animation, uh, sorry, the path that I drew out to as sort of a template to start with. And then I can kind of get the speed and then I can kind of move these around and delete them if I need need to. So now if I look at this, I'll probably have, it's going fairly quick. I could adjust and I can keep moving them around. And if I don't have enough frames or if it's going too fast, I can even, I can even stretch out my entire frame span. So I could just click and drag it out to add a lot more frames. And I'm actually just adjusting my entire timing. I can do this same thing here, whatever is in this layer, I can... I can add more to it. I can also select both of these and right click and insert a frame so that they wind up being the same length as my entire animation. And now when I look at it, I'll probably get a little bit slower speed going on because I've changed the duration of my entire thing. Now, I'm not finished with this. I would want to keep improving upon it and change the speed and you know get a little bit better slow in, slow out, but this is a good place to start and then I can refine it from there. But you can see as it's kind of following through, right? I can even get it to the point where I could get, I'll talk about doing shape tween in another video, but I can get to this point and I can rotate that so that it kind of goes down this way. I could even scale it out, which would be kind of an interesting thing when it gets to right here, I can make it kind of look like it's flipping around, but I probably would want to do that in the shape tween, right? I can get to about right here and kind of flip it around the other way, right? And then kind of get some kind of neat effects going on, but it's still going to look like it's a flat plane. It's not really going to look uh, as well as it could when I do shape tweening and adding shape tweening to it. So that'll be in the next video. So hopefully this has helped out and you can kind of use this to create different path animation to start with a hand-drawn path or a path drawn with a pencil tool and then apply that to your animation.